Hello, welcome to another Wine with Tweedy video. I have uh, snuck out to the heath for the end of the working week, which is irrelevant as I don't work anymore <laughs> for the time being, to try and catch the sunset. It's uh, as probably you may know, any of you living anywhere in England, it's been a pretty wet and rainy week as we deal with this storm. I want to say Kiarin, was it actually Sharon or something? I don't know, whatever this, uh, we had a lot of rain and wind this week, but there's a, a little bit of a gap in the clouds has just conveniently opened up before sunset. It's four something, I think the official moment of sunset due at 4.30. I still like to keep alive that tradition. Let me sort my collar out first. <laughs> No excuse, it's being out in the rain and the mud, no excuse for looking a mess. I'd like to keep that tradition going of fizz on a Friday, Friday fizz. So I have brought along some Nightember. Is there Blanc de Blanc? Let me show you that label again. Oh, uh, pff, terrible camera angle. They're Blanc de Blanc 2015. Their regular classic cuvées are all non-vintage, or multi-vintage as they call it now, so if you want something of a particular year you've got to go to the uh, slightly special releases. But this is a you know, reasonably good deal, it's not hugely more expensive than the classic cuvée multi-vintage, it's 40 something, I can't quite remember what, but it's some, um, you know, given that they have bottles that go into well into the hundreds for the, uh, what's it called, the 1086. Um, they're a kind of prestige cuvee then, it doesn't seem too extreme. Has that terrible camera angle and you probably can't hear me. Of course, still ideally would like to be doing sobrage, but it still feels a bit inappropriate in a public park. The rain stopped for a bit, it's nice. Night Timber Blanc de Blanc, 2015. So it would be 100% pure Chardonnay. And I believe it comes from a variety of vineyards. Night Timber have sites in West Sussex and I think also Hampshire. Classic kind of lemon and green apple sort of fruit character on the nose. Zingy, crisp, more green apple. Um, some nice minerality there. Quite a long finish actually, still Still getting a bit of tingle from that first, oh first mouthful. I would say it's um, it's a little bit green, surprisingly. Not getting a lot of autolytic character either, so definitely got that green apple and lemon. Night Timber are normally quite big on not overworking the, the the sort of zinginess, not sort of just trading purely on acidity and they're quite a proponent of malolactic fermentation. I don't know for sure if that's happened in this particular wine, but that's a, uh, an, another form of fermentation that allows you to convert some of the malic acid, those sort of green apple type notes. Of course, malic comes from malus domestica, the uh, Latin name for apples. And malic, malolactic fermentation allows you to convert some of those kind of sharp, kind of really searing acidic notes into, into lactic acid, a sort of slightly creamier um, sort of flavour profile. Don't know if they did that here or if they did, the effect of it is a little bit lost on me. Definitely getting more sort of, um, like I say, green apple and lemon, and not so much of the, um, the kind of creamy richness that I've come to associate with a lot of Night Timbers wines. Another quick spin round to appreciate this lovely sky now. Sunset's doing something, whatever it can, in between all the clouds over there. Down towards the London skyline, it is wonderfully bleak and uh, a bit more sort of bleak in that direction. I don't know if you can see that kind of glinting off that tall metal skyscraper over there. But uh, softer, more pleasant looking skies in that direction. Probably can't see it just by the patrol car is emerging. There is a rainbow behind there. I almost wonder if this might be ever so slightly faulty. I'm starting to get a very subtle whiff of that struck match sort of smell on the nose. Mm. Night Timber are normally very good at bottle condition. Uh, the, um, uh, their winemaker Brad Greatrix, or one of their two winemakers I should say, Brad Greatrix, uh, sees it as a sort of personal quest in life to eliminate wine faults. He's very vocal about things like light strike, the uh, the reaction whereby sunlight can cause damage to wine, particularly in clear glass, and all of their uh, all of their glass bottles uh, at Nightingale are 
uh, very dark sort of sort of amber glass rather than the usual green um, to, to try and minimize as much as possible the, uh, the possible effect of sunlight on the wine. They use these diam corks. Can I show you the cork? That is what's called a diam cork. Um, I don't know how you recognize it. I mean, it, it, the, the material looks, it's, it's not quite synthetic, but it looks sort of somewhere in between completely natural cork and uh, a synthetic cork. And it, it, it is cork based, but it's what's, what's called a technical cork. It has some kind of treatment that is supposed to stop TCA uh, and I think it possibly works against other wine faults as well. I think maybe that MD, is that a marker for Diam, the manufacturer of these, these technical champagne corks. So, you know, in theory, Night Timber is supposed to be very resilient to wine faults, but I don't know, I don't drink a lot of their Blanc de Blanc, but it doesn't feel quite right to me. If that is what it's meant to be like, it's ever so slightly underwhelming. Guessing we're at the uh, limit of what the GoPro can deal with now in terms of lighting, but uh, I'm probably all in silhouette, but the, uh, the sky behind me is still pretty nice, don't you think? So um, anyway, thanks for watching. Cheers, and I'll uh, see you on the next one.